Hey, yeah, I'm Kevin Dickey. I'm Lee's research assistant. Oops, I mean Professor Burgunder's research assistant. So Professor Burgunder, that's so awkward to say. I just can't call him that. Lee asked me to put this clip together to help introduce you to Business 311 and to get you ready for the first day of class over Zoom. He wishes he could do it, but he just doesn't know how yet. He's kind of a dork. I have to tell you, there was a time when Lee was pretty tech savvy, like in the 80s when there were floppy disks, but those days have passed. Lee's gonna try to use Canvas. <laughs> Uh, that should be a laugh. Luckily, I will be helping him, but I can't be there 24-7, so expect some hiccups. The syllabus, announcements, assignments, really almost everything important will be there, or at least they should be there. Lee had originally planned to use his book. Uh, his book, uh, I wrote most of it as his research assistant. It wasn't his book, it was mostly my book. But do you see my name, Kevin Dickey, here on it? No. Did I ever get any royalties from it? No. Am I a little irritated? Could be. Well, it serves Lee right, but the publisher just decided that it's no longer going to provide the text in any format, except maybe on the Kindle if you have one. You can't even get the ebook on Google Play anymore, so you lucked out. There won't be an officially assigned text for this course. Frankly, that's a good thing, in my opinion, especially since I never got any money from it. The book was over 10 years old and had become pretty dated. Lee says he will scramble to find some free materials on the web or otherwise as the course progresses to supplement his lectures. We'll see how that goes. As for Zoom, well, that could be a trip. Lee has at least some minimal experience with it, but he's still such a fumble fingers. I told him that there may be bandwidth issues when everybody has their video on, and that he may need strategies to handle that. For the first day of class, why don't you all enter the Zoom session with your audio and video turned off? Lee will probably then ask around 10 of you to turn your video on just to see how it goes. Lee marginally knows how to use the chat functions on Zoom, and he understands that you can raise your little blue hand when you have a question. Anyway, be patient with him, and I'll try to shorten his learning curve as much as I can. I told Lee that two hours is really a long time for a live Zoom session and that he should try to offload as much as he can with recorded videos for you to watch before class. So he's going to give that a shot. At the moment, he doesn't know if he'll use Zoom or Screencast. I recommended Screencast, but He's not sure he can figure that program out. For sure, his, wo his work won't be professional quality. <laughs> Just give him a break. He's, he's doing the best that he can. As for class, I would plan on beginning at the scheduled time and for it to last about an hour. Sometimes it might be longer, and other times it could be shorter, if you're lucky. Um, by the way, Lee told me that he's probably going to upload a lecture video 
for you to watch before the very first class. If you can pull it off. Um, and there may be a brief reading assignment for that day as well. Are you kidding me? Assignments before you even enter the classroom. I guess this is the new virtual reality. Okay. I know that Lee doesn't have the patience to watch this far into the video. So let me tell you a little bit about what you've signed up for. Lee. What can I say? He's an establishment nerd, an RIAA hired gun. That's the Recording Industry Association of America. We disagree on almost everything. You know, it's amazing we work so well together. For instance, I like these glasses. He doesn't. I like Godsmack, Disturbed, Rise Against, and Corn. He likes Green Day and Jimmy Eat World. There's also something else we disagree on. I like to download my music for free. I'm now using BitTorrent trackers like Demonoid and Sumo Tracker. Unfortunately, it's gotten a little harder than it used to be, but we can still do it. I bet some of you do it too. Lee calls me immoral. <laughs> me immoral. <laughs> he says I'm ripping off artists. He tells me it's illegal and why do it? Because songs are only about a dollar each on legal services like iTunes or $10 per month for streaming on Spotify. And he can't understand how I put up with all those pop-up ads and spyware on some of my sources. Well, come on, Lee. A dollar a pop is expensive for 1,500 songs a year. And $120 per year for streaming? <laughs> no, thank you. For that kind of money, I used to stand a few pop-ups. Now, now the sources I use don't even have pop-ups. Least so old school. And I use virus protection programs. Who doesn't these days? Anyway, it's legal. Look, if I can borrow a CD from a friend and make personal copies of songs on my computer, then how is this any different? Oh, and downloading in this way is a fair use because it's for my own private enjoyment. It's not like I'm selling the songs or anything. And then there's his argument about hurting artists. Well, all that money goes to the record companies. They're the ones ripping off artists, not me. Look, even if my downloads do violate copy or copyrights, no one's ever going to catch me, so why should I care? I'm no different than the millions of people driving at 70 miles per hour on the highways of LA. I'm just too small a fish to catch anybody's attention. You know, the whole idea of stopping this is hopeless. Even if these torrent sites are illegal in the US, you just can't stop them from operating overseas, like from Russia, Ukraine, and China. Let's just face it, information wants to be free. <laughs> and all those silly technical security measures that the industry has tried, well, they're always easy to break and a bad business model anyway. That's why Apple opened things up with iTunes. Frankly, Lee is a fool. 
He even knows that his pay services don't always have what he wants when he needs it. He used to whine because iTunes didn't have enough Lincoln Park or Smashing Pumpkins. I even remember grabbing a song for him once that his daughter needed for a dance routine. It was called, um, oh, AM to PM. Ah, it was so awful. Anyway, he didn't complain then when I downloaded that song. You know, and just the other day, he asked if I could get him access to Succession because he doesn't have HBO. Of course, I did know how to do it, and I set him up. So what's up with that, Mr. Moral Man? Take my advice. Don't believe everything Lee says. He acts like he knows it all, but he really doesn't. Okay, I think that's enough. I hope you have a great first day of class and a terrific quarter. Peace out, man.